Hello, hello, how are you all tonight? Happy Hump Day. Of course, you know it's me, Pastor Garland of Price with Common Ground Ministry. So I wanted to stop by early because I am tired, right? So I know all of you probably are too. I've had a great week so far, but I really am sleepy. So, and guess what? I have not been waking up at 4.30. I've been getting up at like 4. Well, let me take that back. I've been waking up at 4.30. I've been hitting the snooze button, right? <laughs> So, I've got to do better. I want to find out how you all are doing waking up early as well. I'm just going to um, brighten the screen a little bit. But tonight, I have a really great word for you that I want to share with you that God gave me. And I'm super excited about it. But I always say that every week, I know. And then shout out to everyone that's joining us for the Tuesday Bible study. We are having so much fun. So, if you have not yet joined us for a Tuesday night Bible study, we give away um, Pastor Marvin Price. And I shout out to him. He's teaching an anger management class tonight. Um, but we give away a $5 Starbucks gift card to whoever wins our Bible trivia and we do the Bible trivia questions every Tuesday on Facebook live on our Bible study and we are having so much fun right because isn't that the truth that sometimes people just get bored with Bible study that's why they stop going no offense but life gets in the way family gets in the way we all have good intentions but you know what we don't have to be traditional you have to get the word when you can get the word and so you have to spend time with God and if he says pray without ceasing when do you get to do that in the morning on your job during lunch in the car Bible study from home you know you can listen in you don't have to worry about muting yourself out so we can make time for God in our life we're not um weaving God around our lives we're weaving our lives around God and that's how it should be so let me share with you tonight y'all may hear the puppy in the background so shout out to Bolt Price he's so sweet he's running around here somewhere making a bunch of jingling noise so these what happened was I had decided this was Halloween on October 31st I just wanted to take some notes because I had didn't yet know what God wanted to speak to me about that morning or what he wanted to share but one thing um, I knew was I wanted to to learn I wanted to read about Abraham right and and for some reason I don't know if my Bible was turned to Genesis or if I, I can't remember if I specifically sought out to read about Abraham and what happened or what he was doing during his faith walk when God led him into his promised land so as I began to just take notes and study um, God gave me some things that are for you that I'm going to share with you and so it's a really good word it's also um, God asks a question of you at the end. And so what you have to decide for yourself is, is, is it confirmation for you, right? You test the fruit by the fruit, try the spirit by the spirit. And you have to see if it um, is confirmation for you and if it convicts your spirit or touches your heart in some way to do something different. But if it's not for you, it's totally okay. Every word is not for everybody. Share it with someone you think that it may be for because I our job as disciples in Christ, which we all are Christ's disciples, is to share and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and to share and spread the truth that others might be delivered, set free, and they too become disciples and God continues throughout the earth, right? His word continues throughout the earth. So in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, the Lord said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. I want to make sure I had the screen up high enough. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Above was the command God gave Abram, right? So in Genesis 12, 4, so Abram left so Abram left as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out for Haram or for Haram. In 12.6 it says Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. Now note at the time when Abram went through the land and he was um, on his way traveling through the Canaanites were still in the land those are the giants those are the people that had the land before um, it was promised to Abram so the Canaanites were still there the Lord appeared to Abram and said to your offspring say offspring right I wish we were in church right we say it together so we are Abram's offspring the Lord appeared to Abram and said to your offspring I will give this land so he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. 
So these are just some notes that I was taking when I after I read that. But it's two things I want to specifically make note of. One was God told Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household. And then in number two, he gave him the command and says, go to the land, I will show you. And then it said, God shares with Abram what he is going to do. And he has shared his plan with you as well, right? So these were the instructions, the specific instructions that God gave Abram. And these are the specific instructions that God has asked me to share with you. Number one, he said, leave your country, leave your people, and leave your father's household. What is that? Those are familiar things. Those are the people that are around you. Those are family. Those are friends. Those are things that are a familiarity. God is saying, go. Leave those people, right? Leave your country, which is the place where you live. I don't mean physically move where you live. Leave your country. Leave your people. Leave your family members. Leave your friends and all those people behind. And your father's household, meaning you've got to stop holding on to tradition, right? You've got to stop being weighted in mommy and daddy, mom and daddy and them, auntie and uncle and them, my cousins and them. You are different. You have to do different and you have to be different. He, then he said, go to the land I will show you. That is what he told Abram. And there are so many of you that he also said, God shares with Abram what he is going to do, but he has also shared his plan with you and he has told you to go and that he will show you when you go. But some of you haven't gone yet. The question is, have you followed the first set of the instructions? Those are the two instructions. Have you followed them yet? That's a question for you. Second note, God said, leave your people. So why is Lot with him? Why is Lot with Abram? And then it says that he took with him all the people that they had accumulated. So not only did God say, leave your country, leave your people, and leave your father's house, your father's household. He didn't tell him to take Lot. He didn't tell him to gather up all the people that they had acquired and amassed with and take them with him, right? So we have to obey God's instructions explicitly. So Abram ended up going through the promised land first before he received the promised land and we've talked about that before so many of you because you've not followed the instructions that God has given you explicitly you've gone through your promised land which means you've actually seen it you've actually touched it there may be some giants still living there some of the enemy may still be there but you know God said it was yours but you didn't follow the instructions to the letter of the law okay and then it says so my question was why is Lot with him and the people that they had accumulated when God told him not to take them? Because a lot of times it's comfortable to take people with us. It's comfortable to not go somewhere alone because on the road to success, it's far less traveled and it's not as crowded as the road to people that are just aimlessly wandering through life that aren't going anywhere, that aren't doing anything, right? But it's also lonely sometimes on the road to where God has called you to go. So people choose to stay in a place of comfort. Abram left the place of comfort and guess what? The reason why I made note that he was 75 years old because there are some of you on the sound of my, under the sound of my voice right now that think they're too old, right? They think that, oh, well, like I'm 48 years old. I'm not too old to do anything that God called me to do. I'm just, I haven't even started yet, right? You haven't even started yet. So Abram was 75 years old when God told him to leave his father's house, leave his country and leave his people and go to a land that he would show him. So you're not too old and it's not too late. Okay. And then who is with you? So this is another question. So second note, God said, leave your people. So why is Lot with him and the people they have accumulated? Well, I have a question, another question for you. Who is with you holding up the journey that God did not invite to come along with you? So look at where you are right now. Who is on your journey that is holding you up that was not supposed to be invited to come along with you? And I want to give you an example. When I started one of my businesses, God didn't tell me to have a partner. Now, of course, I'm married, so Marvin is all, has always been my partner's in, partner in businesses. So I'm not talking about my spouse. I'm talking about a physical external partner. 
God didn't tell me to bring a partner along. And it seemed like the business was such a struggle. Like, ugh, it's like trudging uphill. Why are things not working out? Why, why does it seem like things are held up, right? And not only did he not tell me to bring a partner, that person wasn't living right. You know, they had some things they needed to change about their lifestyle and the things that they were doing. And so I kind of just overlooked it because I was like, oh, well, God won't care if I bring these people along. Then people started asking me, could they join me in the business? Meaning they wanted to partner with me and to team up with me. I was like, sure, no problem at all. And then I kept thinking, well, why is the business not growing? I was actually losing money. When I had previously been making money, I was making money before I brought on the partner. I was making money before I had people join my team. I was like, okay, time out, flag on the play something's going wrong so I had talked to I was talking to Marvin about it and Marvin said well because what you need to look at is God didn't tell you to bring along a partner and did God ask you or, or um, lead you to invite those people on the team with you so uh, so what I so the answer was no right so what I realized on the journey was I had invited people to the country right that God was leading me to that he was sending me to I had invited people to come along on a journey that weren't invited or involved in the blessing of God in my life so I had to make a hard decision I let go I got rid of the partner and then I also got rid of the team and I had to start from scratch Marvin and I call it addition by subtraction I talk about it in my book I had to step back and say, okay, ground zero, we're starting from scratch. Now, many people would be like, okay, you're starting over. I'd rather start over and finish strong than keep going and not finish at all, right? And so that, that's how important it is to follow the will of God and to follow the specific instructions God has given us. So I want you to ask yourself this question as well. Who is with you, holding you up, that's on the journey that God did not tell you to invite to come along with you, right? And then that's the challenge for all of us is following this, the instructions specifically without adjusting them to fit our comfort zone. It's like putting together a piece of furniture and or a piece of equipment and then when we, I'm sorry, like putting together a piece of furniture and or equipment and we then decide to follow the instructions when we identify that the item isn't put together correctly or an important piece was left out or there are those who begin to read the instructions they become overwhelmed in all the details of the instruction and from there they begin to overanalyze and then they do nothing so they put the project down midstream and now the project is incomplete because people pick two roads they either don't follow the instructions to the letter, they read the instructions, right? But they don't use all the pieces and components that are in the instructions to build the item that they're trying to build. And then they realize, oh, I didn't build it properly. Or there are those people that do read the instructions, they do hear the instructions, their intent is to follow the instructions, but they become overwhelmed because change is difficult, right? So which one are you? So they've begun the journey, then they quit. So we're talking about if you're putting together a piece of furniture, you're putting together an item, and it's just an analogy. But let's just assume that they began putting the item together and then they quit and the box is left open. It's left open too long. So if you leave the box open too long you may and you don't do anything with what you're supposed to be building, you may begin to lose pieces. Pieces may begin to come up missing which then causes unnecessary delays because we had all the parts and the components ready to go, ready to build the item, but then we just sat it down and said, forget it. So then we began losing pieces, not remembering what were the specific instructions. What was I supposed to do again? How was I supposed to go about it? Which direction was I supposed to go? So mentally and spiritually, we begin to begin, we begin to lose pieces and to forget the things that we were supposed to do because now the specific instructions and the clear direction is becoming hazy, right? And so note, Abraham had to be uncomfortable temporarily to receive God's blessings for himself, his descendants, and his nations eternally. I'm going to say that one more time. Abram had to be uncomfortable temporarily to receive God's blessings for himself, for his descendants that God promised the blessings to, and for the nations that we would be blessed through him eternally. So God is asking you the next question, right? Can you be uncomfortable for a little while 
in order to be blessed by nations, for your generations to be blessed, and for your bloodline to be saved and blessed throughout and for all eternity. I'm going to ask you that third question one more time. And I'm going to repeat the questions for you that God wanted me to share with you. But this is a question that God is, is wanting me to ask you. Can you be uncomfortable for a little while in order to be blessed by nations for your generations to be blessed, for your bloodlines to be saved and blessed throughout and for all eternity? That's the question. And God is just curious. Can you? That's the question. The even greater question is not can you, but will you? Will you be uncomfortable for a little while to receive the blessings? Not just for you, but for generations to come throughout eternity. That's the question. And then by obeying, you have no idea who will come through your bloodline. What will come through your bloodline? What will be the blessings for your bloodline? What will be the inheritance for your bloodline? You don't know, right? But this is what I want to end on. Abram had no clue when he accepted the call of God and he left his country, his people, and his father's household. He had no idea that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, would come through his bloodline. Wow. Is that amazing? Who's coming through your bloodline? Who's coming through your bloodline? So I want to leave the three questions with you one more time. So one of the questions was... Who is with you holding up the journey that God did not invite you to have come along with you? The second question is, can you be uncomfortable for a little while in order to be blessed by nations for your generations to be blessed, your bloodline to be saved and blessed, throughout and for all eternity and then I had one more so give me a second to find it the last question the even greater question is will you go where God is calling you to go right not can you but will you go where God is calling you to go and follow the instructions that I mentioned at the beginning that he gave you so when he gave Abram specific instructions to leave the country leave his people and leave his father's house and then he said um, he said go to a land that I will show you will you go to the land that God said he wants to show you and go to the project the business the idea the ministry the calling whatever it is that God said he will show you will you go that he may show you that your generations will be blessed I love you God bless you thank you for joining me on tonight thank you always for listening I apologize if I got off a little bit um, stumbling over the words. I am super tired, but I love you guys. I'm so honored to be here to hang out with you all. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week, and I look forward to talking to you, God be willing, on Sunday. I love you, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Mwah.